So, unless you've been living with the Barrow Whites, you probably know that the forest update for our server's resource packs recently came out. Which means that, eventually, MCME will be filled with forests that are more immersive than ever. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking about how nice it would be to get screenshots of all the builds making use of our new blocks soon. Uh, unless you've got a potato for a PC, in which case using a shader might just get you a baked potato. The good news is that I'm here to tell you everything that you're doing wrong in your screenshots so that you can feel bad enough about them to improve. And for free, too! Cue that intro, Bob! This video will be covering the topics of lighting, composition, and editing. If you haven't seen my previous video in this series, you can check that out, but it's not required to watch it in order to enjoy this video. Now, before we get into our main topic for today, I do need to put a disclaimer out there for the folks watching. I am not a certified professional photographer. I have taken no lessons in the subject. My experience comes almost solely from taking screenshots on this server for the last four years, so take what I say with a grain of salt and never be afraid to experiment. Ultimately, this is just accumulation of what I've personally learned from my experiences working with MCME. Uh, with that out of the way, let's get into the basics of composition. Composition is about where the subject or focus is in the shot, how much of the shot the subject takes up, and how other elements of the shot complement the subject. What is a subject, you may ask? The subject is the element of the shot that you want your viewers' eyes to latch onto and focus on. It's the main part of the shot. It's what the shot's all about. A shot with no subject is a mess of elements without rhyme or reason. It's failed at achieving the bare minimum of good composition. A subject can hypothetically be anything, I suppose, but elements of a shot that naturally stand out from their surroundings, like towers, a mountain, an island, they all work particularly well as subjects. Try not to let your subject be obscured in the shot. It needs to be very clear to see. Don't let things like trees, excessive fog, or blur get in the way. But Bob, I can't see! So where in your shot should the subject be? To answer that, let's divide this shot into three equal parts using two vertical lines. The left and right lines mark the two most common places to put the subject. This is pretty much what's known as the rule of thirds in photography. Sometimes, one can also put the subject in the center of the shot. But forget left and right. What about up and down? Can you put your subject at the top of the shot, or in the bottom right corner? Basically, no. If you only have one subject, I don't recommend it. Placing your shot's sole subject in a corner, or at the bottom or top of your shot, just increases the amount of dead space without anything interesting in it. If there was something of interest in that space, like big text for example, then you'd have two subjects, not one. How much of the shot should the subject take up then? Well, it's hard to say, but we can narrow it down you should leave the edges of the shot free from the subject. At the same time, you don't want 90% of your shot to be dead space. You'll need to find a nice balance. Cropping your shots to use a different aspect ratio can help with this aspect of composition. Feel like you have too much dead space in your shot? Try switching to a smaller aspect ratio. Maybe 5x3 or 4x3, possibly even square. Perhaps your subject lends itself to a wider aspect ratio than 16x9. Then again, Maybe your subject works well in a vertical format. These rolling hills, for example, provide something interesting to look at from near the top to the bottom edge of the shot. It's very situational, and it depends on what you've chosen as your shot's subject. So, what else can you do to make your subject stand out to the viewer? Well, many things! You can use fog to obscure other parts of the shot, use depth of field to blur foreground and background elements, and even harness the shadows of clouds to darken unimportant parts of the image. What the heck? All of these elements come together with one goal, to make the subject of your shot clear and eye-catching. Do this, and you've succeeded at step one of the screenshotting game. Whew, that was a lot we just covered. And we're just getting started. I tell you what, uh, we're making good time, so let's go ahead and take a short break for lunch. And lunch break over. Light lets us see what it is that we've taken a screenshot of, but that doesn't mean that everything in your shot should be flooded with it. When you have too much light or shadow on the subject of your shot, you get shots that look like this, which I affectionately refer to as garbage. The goal with lighting is to allow the viewer to not only see the subject in your shot, but also to add depth to said subject so that it's interesting and pleasing to the eye, rather than flat and boring. This can be done by utilizing balanced lighting. 
Balanced lighting is when you have a balance of light and shadow on your subject, uh, hence the name. That's not to say that your shot needs an exact 50-50 split of light and shadow, but you want to at least ensure that your shot has a healthy dose of both in order to show depth. Here are some examples of flat lighting. Notice the lack of light from the sun in all of these shots. The brighter and darker spots are all solely determined by ambient occlusion, which basically is just a darkening of well-obscured areas, like corners. And hey, when you're doing shots of interiors in Minecraft, sometimes ambient occlusion is all you have to work with. And that's fine. At the very least, use ambient occlusion that looks decent when you aren't able to use direct sunlight. Although, between you and me, these shots still get more sunlight than the average Discord mod. Besides sunlight, you can also show depth using fog. This can work well for locations like Moria on our server, or perhaps for a foggy sunset with builds off in the distance. Notice how builds further from the camera get more and more obscured by the fog. Sometimes, even a technique as simple as this is enough to show the depth in a shot. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and move on to the third and final aspect of screenshotting. Ah yes, editing! The most exciting part of the video! Now, if you're like me when I first started editing, you're probably pretty intimidated by the idea of editing your shots in software like Lightroom and GIMP. And it's not like I get scared easily. <laughs> well, let me be the first to quell those fears, because basic editing... It's really not that hard. You don't need expensive programs to get started with it either. You can just use the basic photo editing software bundled with Windows to get started. After all, all a shot usually needs are some adjustments to color balance, exposure, and maybe contrast. As easy as that sounds, it is, in fact, entirely possible to completely mess up this step of the screenshotting process. All you need to do is go to the extremes of some slider to make your shot look less like a thoughtful bit of virtual photography and more like a poster for the latest horror film. Sticking to only slight adjustments to the image will help prevent this, but there are a few other hot tips I can offer y'all. It's typically a good idea to adjust the brightness and exposure just enough that the shot really pops a bit. Trust me, when you see the difference between a shot with a slight exposure boost and a shot without it, 9 times out of 10, your brain will prefer that little bit of extra exposure. Vignettes are nice for shots of darker areas as a way to emphasize darkness without making the subject difficult to see, but, like with other editing elements, if I can notice that you used a vignette in your screenshot, you made it too strong. If you're editing your shot and every little adjustment you make makes it look worse, don't edit it. You don't even have to post it if you're not happy with it. I'll give it a day or two and see what you think of it after that. Some editors will give you an easy way to remove odd bits of a shot without leaving much of a trace, like a small gap in a tree line or some floating blocks, or maybe even some, uh, unimportant, uh, text in a message. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm posting false information on the web. Uh, I could go on and on about ways I personally like to edit my shots, but in the end, a lot of that is just subjective. And I'd like to see you guys edit shots your way. Don't be afraid to experiment. And with that, I believe we've covered everything on my agenda for this video. To be honest, I wasn't really sure at first how I should end this video besides telling y'all to... Like and subscribe, check out the server, comment, and all that, you know, yada yada. Uh, and do do that if you like the video, but it occurred to me that this would also be a great opportunity to say a few words to the screenshotting community on the server. Rest assured, I'm not the only fellow taking screenshots of this server. Far from it. There have been a lot of folks over the years who have hopped online and gotten some of the most iconic shots of our locations. Some of them I've seen come and go. Others are still sharing their shots with the world. Some have prior photography experience, and others learn the basics from our Discord community. But to all of our screenshotters, new and old, experienced or not, let me just say that it's the efforts of you guys that really help make this server stand out. Whether it's in our Discord, or on our social media. Thank you all. With that out of the way then, I hope you all enjoyed. You all have a blessed day. Oh, and stay tuned for the bloopers at the end. They're really good. They're also mine. Like, I edited them and stuff, so I don't know why I'm calling them good. I'm just, I'm just that egotistical. <laughs> it's failed at achieving the bare minimum. They all work particularly well as subjects. And that, that was the end of the sentence. I don't know why I ended it like that. Uh, <laughs> feel like you have too much dead space in your shot? Try switching to a small- that was a background noise right there. When you're doing shots of interiors in Minecraft, sometimes 
Ambient occlusion is, wow, that was poorly done. Let's go ahead and move on to the third and final aspect of I'll put my teeth in for that last line. Now, if you're like me, when I first started editing, you're probably pretty intimidated by the idea of editing. Oh dear. <laughs> Every little adjustment you make looks at worse. Looks at worse. Yes, that is English, I swear. And with that out of the way, the, 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 open my teeth again.